Hi, today's episode is part brought to you by an apartment that has no internet and, of course, Jay's favorite brand of tea, the Yorkshire tea. Always take advice from an Englishman when it comes down to tea because this thing is divine. Anyhow, today's episode is going to be about uh, how I managed to not go insane without the internet for two weeks. Right before I moved in here into this apartment, my landlord handed over um, handed me this like huge care package, you know, like the tenant's survival guide to this crappy apartment with 20,000 problems. In there, there were like contact details of plumbers, um, people that could, you know, vacuum your carpet, and then like the mail service guy or like P.O. Box subscription, all that, kind of, all that kind of jazz. And I crap you not, there were 20 flyers in there just about internet providers, just about, you know, internet services. So I saw the flyers. And I was just like, yeah, it makes a lot of sense for me to have internet here since my entire career depends on the internet. But then I thought about it again. Do I actually need the internet? Here's like the thing that sort of like tripped the wires in my brain. The state library, which is a beautiful library with excellent internet and it's free. It's right down the street from my apartment. It's like three minutes away. So I could just walk there. And I thought to myself, I'm not gonna die without like eight hours of internet if I want to use the internet for specific purposes like submitting schoolwork or checking in with um, with people or like uploading YouTube videos, I could just head over to the state library. So I took all of those flyers in a care package and threw them in a bin. And that basically kicked off this entire experiment of living deliberately. So in today's video, I wanna share some of my, some of the lessons that I've learned from this entire process of living without the interweb. First, of course, distractions, funnily enough, because we spend most of our lives distracted. Yes, even the people um, in the self-help circles that claim that they're not distracted people, they're still distracted people. There are two modes of brain functioning here. There's like the focused brain mode, like there's this like the flow state. There's so many names for this thing, but there's also like the normal state, which is kind of like the state that you go into when you're cooking a meal, when you're just hanging out with people, when you're just being yourself. This right here, the hyper-focused state, that's not gonna really determine who you are, like in the long run, but it's the rest state of your mind. Like the sort of shit that you engage with when you're free. I feel like that has a much bigger, like that determines a much bigger chunk of your personality. So therefore, after I got rid of the internet, the distracted state that I slide into um, kind of like aligned itself with hobbies that just don't involve the internet at all. For example, reading a few pages of a book, even though I've never touched that book ever in my entire life. For example, reading an article from a magazine. Surprise, surprise, people still read magazines or listening to music. And of course, you would ask yourself, well, how, how would you listen to music if you don't have the internet? Well, I do have like a few gigabytes of data on my phone that I can use for Spotify streaming. So I can listen to music, but I can't do anything beyond that. So without the internet, I found myself slipping back to all of these things that I didn't know that I've enjoyed. For example, reading, for example, listening to music, for example, cooking a meal, that's something that really surprised me. That, you know, when I was hooked on this dopamine rush of the internet, this hedonic tre treadmill of the internet, I wasn't aware that I've actually enjoyed those things. But now, since the internet's gone, uh, I found myself slipping back to all of the things that I used to really enjoy as a kid or as an adolescent or, you know, right now venturing to my early adulthood. Um, I found myself, you know, just reconnecting with some of the weird shit that I've enjoyed before. The second lesson that I've learned from this entire internet experiment, fiasco, was that um, my actual internet usage became a lot more deliberate and there's no longer that craving for the internet because I have to go downstairs, press the elevator, you know, engaging some small talk with my neighbors. That entire process takes effort. That five minute walk to the library, that takes effort. Settling down at the library, that takes effort. After going through this entire ritual, you better make sure that your internet time's worth it, you know? It's always like, okay, here's a video that I need to upload. Here's a, an assignment that I have to submit. Here's this thing that I was going to get done, but nevertheless, it just got swept under the rug because I got busy. The internet is just a tool to help us grow. The internet is just a tool for us to be better human beings. It's not a part of us and it shouldn't be a part of us. In a sense, the trip to the library sort of ritualizes this using up the internet. So it's no longer just a commodity. It's something that you're using to get yourself to somewhere better. So the entire relationship really shifts. And I think that's one of the major lessons that I've learned from this entire process. And the last lesson, which is going to matter a lot for people who are venturing into their mid-20s or early 30s, which is that sleep gets so much better 
without the internet. I'm not gonna quote any scientific studies because you know, so many channels on, on YouTube, they've already done all the work for me. But personally, before I was the kind of person that would not go to bed before 1 a.m., right? Before I was not the kind of person that would go to bed early and wake up early, right? That's just like, no, I'm like a bohemian person or like, you know, some crazy shit. I'm not kind of orderly person that has that kind of temperament. But then after getting rid of the internet, it's really weird how this worked. I found myself just wanting to wind down at around 9 p.m. Found myself gravitating towards my kettle to make a cup of tea. Uh, I found myself wanting to read a chapter of, for example, Proust, or for example, something else, or for example, something just soothing. We're not making any judgment calls here. You know, like you can sleep late and that's totally fine if you're into that kind of stuff. But I don't know, there's a sense of like, I'm a little calmer and life is a little more orderly. And I was actually able to implement habits that actually stuck around. Now, for example, journaling every single day. For example, reading before bed every single day. And for example, just brewing tea on time and having breakfast on time. Those things are difficult things for a 20 something to master, right? Because typically I would just rush out of the door and grab breakfast on campus. But now with these few hours that I've spared by going to bed early and waking up early, um, I've actually spared out quite a few hours just to listen to, to a podcast or like make, make a really good breakfast and actually brew myself my per first cup of coffee. So those are some of the lessons that I've learned. And also I made the fatal mistake of lighting myself with window light again, because you know how Melbourne's like, the weather is just crazy. And there's no way of knowing how bright the video is going to be because you know the sky is always changing. If you light your videos with the window, it's gonna change constantly. Nevertheless, I hope you guys enjoyed those pockets of insights. And I really wanna hear your thoughts. What's your relationship with your internet usage and what kind of value is it bringing into your life. Anyway, RC Wanda here and I will see you guys in the next video.